Good day. God bless you and welcome to Daily Fresh Manor. Grace Explained, Part 2. Today we are following the importance of a blood sacrifice needed to atone for our sins. We look in the story of Abraham and Isaac, which is found in Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 18. During this time in the book of Genesis, there was something called a burnt offering, which was an offering that meant everything goes to God. It was a dedication of your sins. And purification offering was to cleanse us from all sin, and that was to be made an atonement. Now, for purification of sin had to be a blood offering. This was not a transfer of sin into an animal, but a substitute for our sin. This was the only means by which God's people could be forgiven of sins and to be cleansed, be cleansed from all sin. This was an atonement sacrifice, which meant that you were forgiven of your sins. This was a foreshadow of Jesus Christ that would come and he would be the divine and the last sacrifice needed. We find in the book of Genesis chapter 22 that God asked Abraham to sacrifice his only son of the promise through his wife, Sarah, who was 90 years old at the time and Abraham was a hundred years old. See, God keeps his promises. And he gave them a son whose name was Isaac. God wanted to test his faith, to test if he was willing to relinquish the most dear to him, his only son. At the same time, Abraham was willing to be obedient. And see, he knew somehow that God was going to provide because he told the servants to wait here while we go to the mountain to make the sacrifice. We will be back. He was going to be obedient, maybe thinking that God would raise Isaac from the dead or provide a sacrifice. As we see in the story that out of his love and his obedience, Abraham was not going to put anything between his savior. We find that he would not hold his dearest love from his father. We are asked from time to time to relinquish anything that comes between our relationship with God. Sometimes a love we have for someone or something or a relationship, a person, a place, a thing, a habit, is causing interference with our relationship with our Father. Sometimes we don't have any time for God because we give all our time and energy to something or someone or we are obsessed with something. God is a jealous God and will have no other gods before him. We cannot serve God and mammon as it is found in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. But I want you to listen to this story that is found in Genesis chapter 22, verse one. Sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied, here I am. Take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. The next morning, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him, along with his son Isaac. 
Then he chopped wood for a fire for a burnt offering and set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day of the journey, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Stay here with the other, with the donkey, Abraham told the servants. The boy and I will travel a little farther. We will worship there and then we will come right back. So Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders while he himself carried the fire and the knife. And the two of them walked on together. Isaac turned to Abraham and said, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. We have the fire and the wood, the boy said, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, my son. Abraham answered, and they both walked on together. When they arrived at the place where God had told them to go, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on the top of the wood. And Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. At that moment, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Abraham replied, here I am. Don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Do not hurt him in any way, for now I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Then Abraham looked up and saw a ram by its horns caught in the thicket. So he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son. Abraham named the place Yahweh Yahweh which means the Lord will provide. To this day, the people still use that name as a proverb. On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called again to Abraham from heaven. This is what the Lord says. Because, because you have obeyed me, and have not withheld even your son, your only son, I swear by my own name that I will certainly bless you. I will multiply your descendants beyond number, like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will conquer the cities of their enemies. And through your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. All because you have obeyed me. Don't misinterpret this scripture story as to killing anyone. What God is trying to teach us is that not to make anyone or anything a God in our life. God is teaching us that the first commandment in our life is to love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our might. Let not any organization, news, politics, good deeds, leaders have us so caught up that we have no time for God. Because all this and other things are robbing us of the energy, the spirituality, the dedication, and the reverence that we should have for God. We must use wisdom with our time. What we put into our soul is what will come out. We must remember. Remember, the Lord, your God, is the one who gives you power to be successful in order to fulfill the covenant he confirmed to your ancestors by an oath. And that is found in Deuteronomy 8, 18. Blessings come when we let go and let God, when we become dependent on God instead of independent, 
God will provide. Sometimes we need to check and see, do we have any of those little teeny demigods in our lives? Double check our dedication, our devotion, and our reverence for God, our Father. Obedience in whatever God requests of you brings blessings. You cannot measure. Well, this is all for today, but look for part three, Grace Explained Soon. Thank you so much for listening. And remember to subscribe if you like this message. God bless you and keep you. Heaven smile on you. God bless you forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Fresh Manna Ministries, Evangelist Benjamina Jenkins. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye.